Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing this evening? It is 48 degrees outside. It's chilly. And, um, ooh, chilly kind of sounds good. <laughs> chilly with some cornbread and, uh, well, not like chili with the cornbread in it. Although I do know people that do that, but like chili dinner. I now have two chili dinners to go to on Halloween because we always go to Melissa's for Halloween and she makes uh, my vegetarian chili for me and then she makes Aaron's chili for her with no beans and then she makes chili that has meat in it and beans for everybody else. Um, but Caroline has decided to do Halloween this year. I, we were talking the other day on the phone and she said she wasn't gonna do anything. She's like, you can stop by if you want for chili dinner. And I was like, okay. I said, well, we're gonna go to our friend's house and you know, it's no big deal. Cause I felt bad. Like, you know, maybe she felt like she had to do something or whatever. And she was like, well, I thought maybe I would do chili. I don't know. And then the next day I got a text message from her and it was, well, a group text to like all of us. And then, um, like her stepson and his wife and Alex and I and her husband and Mike and David. And it was like chilly Halloween, come at 5.30. So we have two chilly dinners on Halloween, which is fun. Like I'm really excited about that. Um, it kind of makes Halloween even like a bigger deal now. So I'm really excited about that. But anyway, chili sounds so good, doesn't it? Usually in the fall, I cannot find any lip gloss or... Usually in the fall, I'll make chili once. And then we usually have it like at Alex's mom's. She makes chili, but she puts rice in her chili. And at first I didn't like it, but now I love it. I know it sounds kind of like different, but does anybody out there put rice in their chili? It's so good. My battery is half full. I hope I have another battery with me. I didn't even realize it. Yeah, I do. Um, Alex's mom's chili is like so unbelievably good. It is so, I love it. And uh, is this a lip gloss? This is a lip gloss. I really wanted a lip balm, but lip gloss will do. This is my almost empty one. Um, Is this empty? It almost kind of feels like it's empty. So anyway, yeah, I love Alex's mom's chili. And then my mom's chili was so good. And... What is going on? There's like not hardly any on here. My mom would make chili, like with beans and, you know, meat and all that kind of stuff. Hamb is it hamburger? Yeah. <laughs> whatever it goes in chili and um and then she would take like spaghetti like long spaghetti like everybody else that I know does like well Alex's mom does rice Caroline and Melissa they both do like macaroni which I love and my chili I didn't used to like it but I love it now like that's the only like I think because I grew up having spaghetti in it you know and then my mom and I would take like saltines and crush it in there and it was real I like thick chili I don't like like watery chili like soup and um, now I don't really like the idea of putting spaghetti in my chili doesn't sound appealing at all I think I only liked it because that's the way that I grew up and I always thought my mom's chili was the best you know but now I love it with like macaroni and Melissa always puts out like a big deal and so does Caroline where like you know there's onions and sour cream and um, cheese and put every I put it all on there I put cheese and onions and um, oyster crackers and everything oh, it's so good love it but when I was growing up my mom she would have chili like once a week and then she would just keep the um, the pot in the refrigerator of chili and I would like warm it up after school and stuff I mean, where is the other I have two of those lip glosses in here where's the other one I can't find anything. I need to clean this bag out. Fanny pack. But anyway, so yeah, I loved chili when I was growing up. It was like one of my favorite meals that my mom made. And she always made like either French bread or, is this the same one? I don't think this is the same one. She would always either make French bread or corn bread. 
just like, you know, Jiffy cornbread. I love that Jiffy cornbread. I brought a LaCroix with me. And, um, I remember, like, years later, I asked my mom, I was like, I want to, like, make your chili. Like, how do you make it? And she was like, oh, it's so easy. I just use a pack of Chilio, and then I just do exactly what it says on the back of it. And... <laughs> Um, oh, my mom sometimes would make raw apple muffins. Oh, this stupid battery is dying. My mom would sometimes make uh, raw... Here, I'm going to just pull in here. She would make raw apple muffins, which are so delicious. So one year, I made chili for Alex and I. This was years ago before I was even on YouTube. And I got the chili o pack and the spaghetti, and he was so excited because Alex loves chili. It's like one of his favorite things. And I burnt the chili. How do you even burn chili? But I did. <laughs> Can you even believe it? Okay. I'm going to change the battery, and I will be right back. Okay, I'm back. Um... But yeah, I made this huge pot of chili and I was so excited about it. And I made raw apple muffins, which he loved. Those actually did turn out really really good. And uh, my mom could always make like bread and muffins and stuff, like banana bread, um, orange bread. Any kind of muffin that she would make was always delicious, but she just couldn't bake cookies. Cookies, like she would burn all the cookies. And she would always say, well, I like, I like the burned ones, which you would have to if you were my mom because she burned all of them. But anyway, let's do a little loop-de-loop -loop here. <laughs> go through this way but it is definitely chilly weather <clears throat> so maybe I don't know in November maybe I'll make a pot of chili I've got to get the fireplace fixed I was actually thinking the other day I was like I was standing out there looking at the fire or like the chimney and we have like our neighbors don't have this but we have it's like almost like chicken wire like around the top of the chimney. And so like smoke can get out, but like animals can't get in. And because I thought, well maybe like an animal died in the chimney and that's why like smoke won't go up or whatever. And, um, but I said something to Alex about needing to have a chimney sweep come out and clean the chimney out. And he was like, why, what's wrong with it? And I was like, well like two years ago, last year or two years ago or whenever I tried it, it like the smoke just came billowing back into the house. And he goes, are you sure? And I said, yeah. So then I got me thinking and I was like, well, maybe I should just try it again. You know, maybe there's nothing wrong with it. Maybe I opened the flu wrong, get a flashlight out and see if I can try it. So I'm gonna do that and see. I will be so upset with myself if like for the last two years, cause I only tried it once and then like smoke was coming out. I like lit a fire and smoke was coming out into the living room. And so I had to open all the doors and window or all the windows and stuff and the sliding glass doors get the smoke out of the house. Um, but if for like the last two years I could have a fire in the fireplace and I didn't know that, I'm gonna be so upset. But this year I really do wanna have fires in the fireplace during the winter and stuff like that. And um, it's just I, to sit there and watch like TV on my iPad and have a fire in the fireplace is just so completely cozy. You know I'm living like this cozy life now. I don't know what has happened to me. I am like completely like nesting. <laughs> And I don't know, like, what, what it is about. You know, it's kind of funny because, like, this summer, I really enjoyed, like, getting to know my neighbors and talking to my neighbors. And now I'm, like, really friendly with all my neighbors and stuff. And then, um... Um... Like, going to the pool. I loved going to the pool and, like, hanging out and talking to the neighbors and stuff. And now that it's, like, fall... It's like, I still see the neighbors, they walk by and I wave and I talk to them when they stop and stuff like that. I was talking to my, I was thinking about what I was talking to my neighbors about earlier today. It was so funny because their grandson was visiting and he's like two, like one and a half or I think he's like two now. And I was getting ready to film a bunch of videos and all of a sudden I heard something on our patio and I was like standing in the kitchen and I turned around, <laughs> Alex was feeding the dogs and I turned around and our neighbor's grandson was on the patio and our neighbor, she was like on the other side of her fence and she was like, come here, come and like to him. And I went, and he had um, a rake 
and he was raking leaves off of our, he had this big long rake, and he was, that he could hardly hold, but he was like raking leaves off of the, the patio. And so I opened the door and I walked outside. The dogs were trying to get out there to him and I said, um, <laughs> and she said, he doesn't charge a lot. And I said, <laughs> She goes, I'm so sorry, because she was like saying he doesn't charge a lot, like to rake the leaves and stuff. And I said, I, I said, I'm just glad he's having a good time. I said we could care less. I said just you know it, whatever, let him have a good time. And um, she said I think he's trying to get away with from us because we're boring, but his parents are here too, so maybe that's what they were sitting on their back patio. So anyway, um, but like I just feel like so much a part of like the neighborhood now and. I just like love walking around and like sitting in my backyard and just like I'm like so weirdly obsessed with this like squirrel table and feeding my birds and stuff like we sat there last night and we were eating dinner and like oh I think I said something about this last night but Alex at one point was like there's seven birds in our patio right now there were like all of these birds and they're beautiful these cardinals and stuff did you know that cardinals were male I didn't know that Alex has, now he's told me that about 15 times now <laughs> um because I kept on saying, uh, well, he had told me that before, but I kept on saying, Do you, she's so pretty. And he goes, Card those red cardinals are male. Those are the males. I said, okay. He kept on telling me over and over and over again. So anyway, um, but I'm just like living like this totally like cozy life and like loving, um, you know, just like listening to cozy books and watching cozy shows. I am completely obsessed all of a sudden with watching Murder, She Wrote. Like I have started watching Murder, She Wrote. I'm only on the second part of the first episode. <laughs> but you know what's so funny is, so I used to watch Murder, She Wrote um, when I was younger and like I always had this idea that my mom and I watched Murder, She Wrote together. I started it actually last night. I started it and then I just finished it right now because Alex had brought me, um, he went out to dinner for a friend's birthday tonight. So he brought me home empanadas and street corn, which was delicious. But I had always thought that my mom and I watched Murder, She Wrote together, like when I was growing up. And I looked on Wikipedia last night. Well, I actually wanted to see how old Angela Lansbury was. I was like, is Angela Lansbury still alive? Which she is, she's 94. Did I talk about this last night in my blog? Anyway, she's 94. So, I was watching, or I was looking that up on the Wikipedia page, but it actually started, I feel like I already talked about this. Did I talk about this in my vlog last night? Am I repeating myself? I don't know. I feel like, I, but I didn't start, when did I start it? I started it, well, I couldn't sleep this morning. So, I got up, because I was like laying in bed and I was tossing and turning, and so I got up and I went downstairs and I made um, four of these Morning Star. They're like just this big. These like hot sausages. These hot and spicy sausages. I think they had freezer burn. My stomach kind of hurt later from them. But, um, and then I also found, oh my God, I had a box like hidden up. I didn't even know it. Like they weren't hidden, but they were just like on top of something. <laughs> Maybe they were, I don't know. Of Girl Scout do -si Do's, the peanut butter ones. And I had a package inside of the cookies. Like, you know, it has like two packages in there. One of them was never, it was completely unopened. And I opened them and I was like, these are going to be so stale. And they weren't. They were totally fine. Like, they were perfect. And so, um, there were a bunch of cops over there at that Taco Bell. That's so funny. Like, last night, the other Taco Bell, there was a bunch of police officers. But, um, so I had four sausages... <laughs> And then I ate the entire package of the do -si dos Like, just not the whole box, but, like, the package. Which is still a lot. And, um... But I sat there and I watched part of this first episode of Murder, She Wrote. And then I went to bed and I just, like... I don't know why I'm, like, obsessed with this idea of being cozy. Which is such a funny thing because Alex and I kind of throw that word around. Like, like pajamas and robes and stuff we'll just be like oh let's get cozy or you look so cozy or whatever and I finished um I finished the the audiobook that I was listening to which is the first book in the misfortune series by uh Jana de Leon Jana de Leon and I'm now reading the second book in the magical midlife madness book it's called magical midlife dating 
I'm already halfway through the book. Can you believe it? Like, I am, like, powerhousing through these books, you guys. I'm just, like, having so much fun just with, like, the simplest things in my life. Like, tonight, we are going to Florida. We finalized all of that. And um, we leave this weekend. So, because we're going to be doing so much stuff while we're down there with, like, looking at places, and then I just want to spend time with Alex, um, I was trying to, like, kind of, like, pre-film some stuff. Like, I wanted to pre-film, like, Peterism's videos and review videos. Um, I try to do that before I go out of town places, because that way, like, I love to continue to post. Like, I don't, you know, want to miss just, like, an entire, you know, week of posting on my channels, and, um... When PP passed away and we went to Mexico, I did take a whole week off. And that was really good for me. Like, I I really needed that time to just, like, heal and feel better. It was actually really good for me to be away from social media. You know, like, I'm, I don't get on social media as much as, like, a lot of other YouTubers. You know, like, when I get on there... I see a lot of like, and I'm not just talking about drama channels. Like, I don't, I don't actually follow a lot of drama channels or you know whatever. I'm talking about just YouTubers in general. YouTubers post a lot on like Twitter and Instagram and social media, like constantly, right? And I just don't enjoy social media as much. Like, I don't even know that I want to say as much as I used to because it it was almost kind of like consumption back in the day. I just don't love it. I just don't, it's not that entertaining to me anymore. So when I took a week off, when we went to Mexico, like I didn't get really, I mean, I looked at social media every day for like a little bit, but like not really. Like I really didn't. It was nice. Like I didn't post anything. It was, I just was away, you know, and I was able to just read and listen to books and watch shows. <clears throat> and spend time with Alex. I'm actually thinking about maybe doing that like one week every year at like the end of the year. Just taking a week where I like don't really post anything and I'm not active on social media and just kind of like step away for a week. Because it was really nice to kind of like declutter my brain. I missed posting on YouTube like crazy. But I just was in no position where I could do that. I just was like... Especially on my vlog channel, like, I really missed, like, vlogging. And I wanted to get on video and, like, share what I was going through. But I didn't even know really how to put it into words. I just was so, like... There were just, like, during that whole, like, trip, there were just long moments where Alex and I just didn't even say anything to each other. It was just nice to be in each other's company, you know? We, like, shared a lot of memories of PP and told each other stories and showed each other videos and stuff like that. But like there were, there were days where we would like walk down the beach and we would like walk down for like 20 minutes and just not even say anything, you know, it was kind of nice just to be in each other's presence without the need to say anything. And, um, you know, and he, and he, Alex is somebody that like, he loves social media and like all of the messages he was getting from people, like it just, it, and, and they helped me too. Like, but at the same time, like, it really, like, meant a lot to him. And he responded to each and every one of them. Like, I just wanted to, like, go away. Like, that's how I felt, you know? Like, I just, I don't know. And I just, I see, like, I see some people that just, like, are constantly posting on YouTube. And people that I like, you know, are not posting on YouTube, posting on Twitter. Or they're constantly posting on Twitter. And I'm just like... Do you, like, li like, live on Twitter? <laughs> like, I just couldn't do that. Like, I, I couldn't. But you know what? Like, back in the day, I was kind of, like, really consumed with social media. I was, you know? And, um, like, Tanya is, like, on Facebook all the time. Like, literally all the time. Like, when we're in the car, she checks her. Like, and I joke with her about it. And, um... She's like, I know. She was like, but I just love looking at stuff. I, I never get on Facebook, like hardly ever. I don't even honestly know the last time I posted on Facebook. The, the True Crime Book Club, I you know keep up with that stuff over there. But like my own personal Facebook page, like I hardly ever post over there. So anyway, I don't know what I was talking about. Oh, but I was pre-filming videos. Did I say that already? Yeah, I was pre-filming videos. 
um, for while we're gone. I'll still post. I'll still vlog every night while we're gone. And um, they won't be long vlogs. They'll just be, you know, like 20 or 30 minutes just like sitting there and like kind of catching up on my thoughts or what we did that day or whatever. Um, and I'm just really, to be honest with you, really kind of excited to like relax with Alex and read a couple good books and go look at some possible places that we could possibly get down there. So, um, yeah. But I wanted to pre-film these videos before because I like to have that done in advance and um, at least on like my review channel and then my Peterisms channel. But um, like on my drama channel, I obviously can't because I don't know what's going to happen like that day, you know what I mean? And then the vlog I can't because... It's a daily vlog that I do. And then my Peter Does Stuff channel, my booktube channel, I don't even know if I'll post while I'm gone. We'll see. Depends. So, anyway. Excited about that. And, um... Tonight, I, like, sat there and I filmed, like, seven Peterisms videos back-to-back. -back. I had so much fun doing it. It was so nice just to, like, read all of these, like meditations it really got me thinking about a lot of different stuff and um I kind of thought I was gonna get tired like I but like when I have pre-filmed videos before I kind of start getting tired by like the second or third one but tonight I didn't like I got done with one I'd be like okay let's do another one I was like really excited I had like a great time doing it um I seriously could film like 18 videos a day I love it so much I feel so blessed that I get to film videos and anybody wants to even watch them you know but I lit all of these candles in the house and had candle waxes going. I had like eight or ten candles going in the house. And all of them were Halloween scents. Abby from the Poor House Company, where I have my candles. So if you want to go buy some candles from the Poor House Company, go to my link below. I do make a little bit of money off that. I'm just going to let you know. But, um... She sent me all of her Halloween candles. And I can't remember. The one is called uh, Squad Ghouls. Like Squad Goals, but Squad Ghouls. Here we go again with it being out of focus. Um, they smell so good. These Halloween candles that she sent me. So I have those burning all day. And then some Bath and Body Works candles. And I have my candle warmer going in the kitchen. And then I had candle waxes going. It was like these uh just walmart ones that i got in like a long time ago it was called like fall harvest or something and they smelled very like apple pumpkin ish kind of stuff but they smelled fantastic and um the whole house smelled so good and like outside it was really pretty today but like it was kind of like a little breezy windy and it was there was a chill in the air and um like, the, the leaves were blowing around in the backyard and stuff, and the dogs were, like, running around. Oh, this camera, come on now. Don't do this tonight, the whole night. I think I have it fixed, and then it stops. There. But anyway, I don't really know what's going on with me. I don't know why I'm, like in this really comfy, cozy spot of wanting to, like, nest. And, like, I was thinking tonight, like, okay, all these things I want to get for winter, you know? Like, I want to get, like, flannel sheets, and I want to get, like, a flannel duvet cover. Or maybe just, I think, just get a big flannel, like, comforter instead. Because the comforter that we have in our bed now is not a duvet com com a cover. Um, it's actually just, I think it's like a Marc Jacobs that I bought, like, this whole set of, like, sheets and pillowcases and shams. And, um, it's a really nice, like, comforter set. But I had always before, like, we would have, like, a down comforter and then I put a duvet over it. It's a lot of work, in all honesty, to, like, do that. But I will say it's easier to wash. Um, the comforter is, like, so big and bulky that it's hard to wash. And it takes, like, five times drying it for it to be completely dry. But I was thinking tonight that, like, maybe I just go get, like, some really nice, like, flannel sheet. Like, flannel jersey 
kind of sheet sat um, with like a flannel comforter to go for the, the fall, you know? I keep on telling Alex he has to pick out nightstands. I'm like, pick out any nightstands you want. I don't really care. I just want new nightstands. I'll get them. I'm like, I'll get them. You pick them out. I don't care. And he's like, okay. And then we never do it. So that's something else. Maybe while we have some time just to like sit next to each other while we're in Florida, I'll be like, nightstands, let's pick them out now. <laughs> I love that people have their houses decorated for Halloween. Like that house is all kinds of stuff. Big pumpkins and lights in the background. So yeah, I felt like so absolutely just like peaceful and content lately. I really, I don't know what it is. I feel like some shift occurred in me. Do you ever, like, you live your life and you feel like you're constantly, like, waiting for something to happen? But then, one day you realize, I don't know if that makes sense, like, it was never even anything, like, specific. I just guess I always kind of lived like I was waiting for something, whether that was, like, fall or Christmas or the new year or summer and spring again. Like, the other day I was like, oh, my God, how many months do I have until I can go to the pool again? And I was like, November, December, January, February, March, April, May. Oh, my God, I've got seven months before, seven and a half months before I can go to the pool again. <laughs> To then only be able to go to the pool for three months, right? But, you know, if we end up getting a place in Florida at some point, then we can go to Florida and be at the pool or the beach anytime we want. But, um... I feel like for so much of my life, like, I lived my life waiting for, like, I felt like I... Not necessarily for anything specific, like I was just naming things that like I was like waiting for, I had expectations for. But like in all honesty, like I just had this like yearning or this waiting feeling inside of me. Like I was talking about in one of my meditations tonight that like, you know, in early sobriety, I was really focused on like, getting that like to 30 days or 60 days or 90 days or six months or a year, you know, or 18 months or two years. Like I wanted those dates. Like they represented like success to me. But then I was saying that never once like in my 25 plus years, 25 years and nine months of sobriety, had I ever had a moment, like I've never had a moment in sobriety where I feel like I've arrived if that makes sense. Like, I've never had a moment where I'm like, okay, like, I finally got here. Because sobriety to me today is just such a design for living. It's how I live my life. It's the language that I speak. You know, I went into, like, a lot of it in this meditation, but... I... So... In early sobriety, I was, like, waiting to reach these, like you know, time marks or whatever. And like that represented something to me. It like represented like th that I'm successful or I made it or whatever. Right. But like, even when I got there to 30 days or 60 days or whatever, like I can remember getting to six months and being like, I've never been sober. Oh, this stupid camera. Come on tonight. Don't do this tonight. Why does it keep on doing that? This thing that's supposed to, like, focus on my face is, like, darting all over. But anyway, you know, I got to six months, and I can remember walking out into the parking lot and thinking to myself, I've never been sober for six months before. Like, I couldn't remember the last time that I had been sober for six months, and it was kind of like this very much this odd aha moment, you know? I'm going to have to turn it off and turn it on again if it continues to do this, because it's, like, really bad. I don't know why it's doing it. 
with the um, being out of focus. Some nights are just worse than others, I guess. But I'm going to stop it. I'll be right back. Let's hope that took it away and it works. Um, so anyway, I... Other than like six months, like at a year, I can remember thinking to myself, it's hot in this car. That's not what I thought at a year, no. At a year, I thought to myself, I've made it through every major event in a year. I've made it through the birthdays, I've made it through the holidays, I've made it through every holiday that you can imagine. I've made it through every anniversary of anything. Like, I've made it through everything for a year, and I didn't have to drink. And that was really powerful to me. Like. When you make it through an entire year, of, you know, you've used everything as an excuse to drink or use, you know, summer, let's drink, winter, let's drink, you know, summer, you know, winter. I just remember, I used to drink that Captain Morgan spiced rum. Tony and I were talking about that one night. We saw, like, they had some kind of it in the grocery store, and we were, like, talking about it. And I was like, I used to drink that. Like, for one whole winter, I did. Like, I think it was just, like, one winter. I drank, like, Captain Morgan spiced rum and Coke or something at home. I would drink it. Which I think it's so funny. But anyway. You know, once I had, like, made it through that first year, I was like, I can make it through anything. Because I've made it through one year, you know. But I never had a moment where, like, I felt like... Because you would get a year, and then it was like a year and a day. A year and three days. A year and six days. You know, like, it just goes on. Because it's a way of living. It's a design for living, you know. So I never really felt like I was at the, like the end of the race, so to speak. Like, okay, I reached the end of the marathon kind of thing. I never felt like that, you know? But like, I feel like so much of my life, I have felt like I was waiting for something. I don't even know how to explain it, really. Like, I just felt... I just felt like I was waiting for something new to happen or something exciting to ha or like an adventure or you know I don't know I've, I feel like so much of my life I've just kind of waited and waited for something I don't even know that if that makes sense and recently I've kind of just accepted that this is my life I have a great life. I mean, I have an incredible life, right? But I've kind of accepted that this is my life. And I've, like, stepped into it and owned it as my own. And, like, I mean, after 12 years, like, really stepped into, like, my condo being my condo, you know? Like, being our home, not just my mom's condo, you know, you know what I mean? Like and really got to know my neighbors and the neighborhood and I don't know and like really made some great friends in the last couple years and sobriety and I just really like calmed down and stopped feeling like my life is right around the corner does that make sense does anybody else relate to what I'm saying like you kind of feel like you're waiting for life to start like, I kind of at some point accepted that life started and this is my life and I'm really happy with my life. And I think that once I was able to accept that and kind of, like, step into it and own it and be like, this is my life. Like, I have a great life. Like, I'm really happy with my life, right? Then I no longer was looking at, like, what was missing from my life. Like, what wasn't there. Instead, I was grateful for what I did have. And I was happy about all of the things that made my life magical instead of constantly looking at what wasn't in my life, you know? Because for so often, for so long, so long, for so long and so often, I had looked at what wasn't in my life instead of embracing my life as it was and saying, you know what, you have a, you have a pretty amazing life, let's be grateful for it. And somewhere in the last couple years that just came to me, like, and it was, but that I will say is not something that I like really worked that hard on. I don't know if it was in the process of me doing evaluation, if it was in the process of me practicing gratitude every day. I really do think that has something 
to do with it. Like, you know, the gratitude list where I did a gratitude, a written, I did a written gratitude list every day for a year. I wrote it down every night. I think I did every morning and every night. But I definitely know I did every night and I would write it down and then I would read it out loud. And it had to be different every single day. And it had to say, I am grateful for, and then why? Like, I am grateful for my husband because he loves me, you know, or because he's nice to me or whatever. But, like, it had to be, like, specific that day. Or I am grateful for, you know, my home because it gives me a roof over my head, safety, you know, um, from the storm, so to speak, and a place to sleep. And, um... I had to give specific reasons, you know, why I was grateful for these things. And then I would go through and I would read them out loud. I had to go through, I, like, I read this somewhere and doing this. Um, I think it may have been that magic book by Rhonda Byrne, The 30 Days of Magic. But I would go through and I would, like, read them out loud. And, you know, then I would go, I was very strict with all this stuff. Like, I'm not as good with this today as I used to be. Um... You know, I would, as I was going up the stairs, I would do my prayers and my meditations. Like, on, well, I would sometimes read a meditation book at the, where the computer was, because that was where I did the gratitude list. But I would do my prayers and my affirmations on the steps. Like, I, as I was going up the steps, I would get on my knees and pray. And then I would go into the bathroom, and I would do, you know, my nightly ritual on my face. And then, um of like a hydrating face mask and stuff, but I already had my phone plugged in. And by the time I walked to the bed, I was so peaceful and serene. And then, and no matter what time I got home, no matter if it was late or if it was six o'clock in the morning or if it was 11 o'clock at night, you know, I was so serene that then my thoughts were like positive thoughts as I was going to sleep. And I would wake up, and I have this ritual that I would do, which I've, like, gotten away. I still do my morning ritual, but I don't do it as, like, structured as I used to do it, you know? And, like, gratitude was a huge part of that, whereas now I just kind of do... I don't know. Like, it, I, I'm such a believer, and if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I don't know why I got away from doing those things, you know, when really they didn't take that long. Um, but I think somewhere along the process of building my spiritual foundation and practicing gratitude as an action. I think I like, it really seeped in and I really, really truly became, like I already felt grateful for my life, but I like really truly felt it on a whole other level, you know? It's like, I remember seeing the video with Oprah where she's talking about simple abundance and she starts crying. It's like, I felt that joy. I felt that level of appreciation for my life in a way that I never had before and I, and I feel like that almost on a daily basis anymore like I really do you know and I kind of started just accepting life where it was and realizing like man I have a pretty good life you know like And then that led me to being to the point where I could say, you know, like my old sponsor you saw, I say, I have a life beyond my wildest dreams. I don't know. Maybe it's kind of like an animal, you know, like finding a, a safe place in the woods. And their first job is that they have to find a safe place in the woods. And maybe that's what I've done the last couple years, you know, is... I have found my safe place in the woods and now that I have found it and I've accepted it and I've like said this is mine, you know, and I'm not just talking about like my house, I'm talking about in life, that space in life, you know, and now that I found it, maybe I'm able to like nest, maybe my ability to nest and want to get cozy and comfortable is all a reflection of the work I've done the last couple years, I don't know. I haven't really talked to my sponsor about this. I should probably ask her what she thinks. And then I think sometimes maybe it's, there's no need to analyze it 50 ways. Maybe it just is, you know? <laughs> I mean, 
And I know that people are probably getting so tired of me talking about cozy mysteries and cozy TV shows and lighting cozy candles and wearing cozy clothes and making a cozy thing. But like for some reason, that whole idea of like coziness and being comfy and nesting and whatever is just, it makes me, I don't even know how to explain it, so incredibly happy and content. Like it really does. Like I was really like kind of like trying to explain it to Alex the other day and I don't like think he even really understood on the level of happiness that it makes me. It's not just like I'm listening to this book and this book is good. It's like I really feel connected to like every aspect of my life like right now. You know, it's like <laughs> You know when you like drive by a house and like they have like let's say like one light out like they have you can see that they have like Christmas lights over a lot of like their toys like not toys but they have like you know blow up things in their front yard like they have all the decorations out there for Christmas like you know lights on every area of the house but when you drive by maybe they just have like one thing lit up because they didn't want to plug everything in for that night right but then you drive by and it's like you know that scene like in some like Christmas movie where they plug it in and like the whole house lights up like that is how I feel right now I feel like I'm plugged in like to everything that makes me joyous in my life but it's not like this over exuberant joy it's like this level of being peaceful and content and just being really really happy with the life that I've been handed And so I don't know, maybe that is corny, but it's my life, and I don't feel like it's corny if it's life, you know? And it's kind of weird, too, that, like, <laughs> that it all kind of came via, like, a squirrel table. I mean, in honest, like, honestly, a squirrel table, a cozy mystery book, Halloween and fall candles. Like really, like, isn't that crazy? And all of it together just kind of, like I think like if you ask yourself this question, like, there are things I want in my life, right? Like, obviously, we're going down there to look at property. So, yes, I would love to have a place in Florida. I don't know when that's going to happen. We're not in any rush. But I would love to have a place in Florida. Um, you know, I would... But other than that, like, and traveling... If I had to live my life exactly as it is right now for the rest of my life... I like being able to make videos every day and spending time with Alex and going to see Tanya a couple nights a week and taking naps and listening to audiobooks and and yes, I understand that the tragedy is going to happen and people are going to come and go and you know like sickness is going to happen and things like I mean I understand that if that were a part of that as well like I'm not saying like in this perfect world I'm saying like Ideally, like, if I had to just live my life the way that I'm living it right now with, like, listening to audiobooks and making videos and spending time with Alex and friends and, um, my family and, you know, going to brunch every Sunday and sleeping in and taking naps with Boo Radley, like, if that was my life for the rest of my life, I can say with certainty today that I would be absolutely 100% fine with that and that I would feel... Like, I had a life beyond my wildest dreams. Like, and I think that's what it was, was total acceptance of I'm extremely happy with my life. Like, I don't need a whole lot more, you know? Like, like don't get me wrong. I like nice things. Like I've said, you know, like, would I like a, you know, Louis Vuitton this or, you know, sure. Like, from every once in a while, but I don't need it. You know what I mean? I'd rather have a trip, in all honesty, or, you know, a nice dinner out or something like that. But it's like... And I say that because there's going to be a point that I'm going to want something like that too, you know? And, but like, if I never had it, I'd be completely fine. I think that's the other thing. It's like, I don't have this need to have that stuff. I don't have this need to have, 
a bigger house than I have or a better house or, you know, like it was funny because I said to Alex the other day, like he was, like he's been watching TV in the bedroom a lot. We've had that TV, we got that TV the first year we were together. That is a 12 year old TV in our bedroom. I mean, and granted, we hardly ever watch it. It's a big TV, but we don't hardly ever watch it. We got it at Walmart and it was like, it was like $600 when I got it. And um, it's a nice TV, but it was like, we hardly ever watch it because we don't have cable in the bedroom, so we can only, I mean, who cares now, right? But he just watches Netflix and stuff in there. But he's really started watching a lot of TV in the bedroom. When we first got together, we used to, because um, we were trying to save a lot of money in our first year, so we wouldn't go to movie theaters a lot. We would go to Walmart and we would like buy movies and because you know we could like for the price of like two or three movies was like how much it costs us to go to movie theater then we buy candy and popcorn you know and come home and like it was a third of the price that it would cost us if we went to the movie theater so we would like open the windows in the bedroom i can remember and like make the bed real nice and then all the dogs would sit up there and we would all the all of us alex and i and boo and Tucker and Pee Pee, all five of us would sit there and we would watch a movie. I remember one of the very first movies we ever watched was, I bought, we bought a zoo. I think it was with Matt Damon. It was the very first movie I ever saw my husband cry in. And um, it was a, such a great movie, but we, we didn't, like other than that, we really haven't watched a lot of shows on there and stuff. I always, find the remote to be extremely difficult. He now has it hooked up to his phone, so he can just like do stuff through his phone. I don't know how he did that, but anyway, he'll have to show me sometime. But anyway, I said to him the other day, I said, do you want to get another TV for the bedroom? I said, we can go look at TVs. Like if you know, you want to get a nicer TV for the bedroom or something. I always walk into Costco and I see those TVs right in front. They're so expensive though, you know? They're like two and $3,000 with these like crystal clear TVs. And our, and our TV down in our living room, it's old too. Like, I mean, it's not old, but it's probably eight or 10 years old at this point. Oh God, it's probably nine or 10 years old. And I said, do you want to get a different, like a new TV, like for our living room or for our bedroom? And he was like, why? And I was like, I don't know. I thought, he goes, our TVs are completely fine. We don't need new TVs. I think if we had a new TV and we saw how clear a new TV was, we would realize that we really did need a new TV. We don't need one, but we want one, you know? But I was like, okay. We just don't want for a whole lot, you know? And, um, and I think that we're both, like Alex would spend all of his money on clothes. He loves clothes. But I think that we're just in a position where we like are really just grateful for what we have, you know? And I think we've just really like today, it, it means more to us to like spend time with family and friends and um, save money for our future and plan things out, you know, for down the road. Like, so, I don't know. I'm happy though. I know that. And I think it was like I, the waiting stopped or something. I don't even know if that makes any sense. Like what I'm trying to say. It like felt like a waiting game a lot of my life. Like. Does that make sense, what I'm saying? Does anybody else relate to that? Where you kind of feel like a kitty just like ran across the road. Gray and white kitty. Where you feel like, well, if this happened, my life would be better. Or if that happened, or when this happens, or when that happens. And then you realize that like your life isn't made up with all of those things. Your life is made up of what you have now and all of those days you spent waiting around for this to happen or that to happen. In reality, you could have been spending appreciating and enjoying your life instead of waiting and wasting your time 
Because waiting is basically complaining in silence that your life isn't what you want it to be. You know? And instead, I could have been appreciating everything that I had. And I don't know, in the last couple of years, it kind of, it, it changed for me to a point where now I'm just happy and accepting and, and loving my life. I don't know. I've been rambling long enough. I don't really have a whole lot more to say. <laughs> so I'm going to get off here now, I think. I'm going to cut this one early tonight. Cut this one off early and um, I'm going to listen to my audiobook. Magical Midlife Dating, book two in the K.F. Breen series, Magical Midlife Madness. You should check it out. It's very good. And, um, yeah, I'm going to make my outro real short tonight. Uh, thank you for watching if you made it this far. I really, really appreciate it. Put a bunch of blue hearts in the comment section below. And if you liked it, this video vlog, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you're subscribed to my channel already, thank you for subscribing. Please make sure that you're still subscribed. And if you haven't subscribed already, please think about subscribing to this channel. And um, if nobody else has told you this today, I love you. That's me. I said it. I love you. And um, do something today that will make yourself happy. Do something today that will make yourself proud when you look back on it. I hope you guys are having an amazing Wednesday. Happy hump day. You've made it halfway through the week. Um, have an amazing day. Tell yourself that you're going to have an amazing day in the morning. And um, if your day gets off track, you can always start your day over. But tell yourself that great opportunities are going to come your way all day today. And you're going to have positive experiences all day today. Most importantly, make sure that you reach out to somebody and let them know how much they mean to you. Text them, call them, send a postcard, send a letter, Maria. <laughs> Knock on their door and tell them I. Take them a loaf of uh, banana bread or uh, whatever, you know. Just let somebody know how much they mean to you. It's important, I think, to validate other people's existence in our lives. It always makes me feel good when other people do it for me. And uh, like I also always say, practice random acts of kindness. But like I also always say, don't tell anyone. Just do it because it's the right thing to do. It's a nice thing to do. Put uh, some love, kindness, and compassion out there in the world and be forgiving of people. And like it says in the four agreements, always lead with love. And um, I love you guys so much. Thank you um, for listening tonight. I'm Some days I'm just more grateful and full of gratitude and happy and feeling blessed than others. And tonight I'm just feeling super, super blessed. So um, there's like an old Mustang behind me or something. It's very cool. I can see it. Anyway, um, I love you guys so much. And uh, I will see you tomorrow. Bye. Love ya. Mean it. Love ya. <laughs>